families of dead rich men battle for the billions. Uh, talk about wheels as well. Sometimes this is the not really forthcoming, especially when it comes to inheritance cases are ongoing. But ODM also to cancel grassroots polls as rivalry uh, spirals. That is another story that you can pick up in the dailies this morning. But the pertinent issues that we continue to discuss here with our panelists is regarding this particular act, the Finance Act and a raft of other issues around it. Uh, as far as housing is concerned, a lot of things are tucked away or were tucked away inside the Finance Act, some of which the legislators have no sodding idea, as you had, on what is tucked away inside the Finance Act that they were surprised that they gave the consent and now some people on the ground are affected by this. But more importantly, this is the contract heart of Gashagwa, who's walking back on Kenyatta's attacks. I'm sorry, Deputy President tells former First Family for his incessant attacks on them and their enterprises as politics in Mount Kenya holds up. Uh, this is where we also will hear the voices of Wilson Sosion and also uh, Senator Tabitha Mutinda as well. But before we head there, I think we need to exhaust the issue of Finance Act before we go to Mount Kenya politics. So we come back to Otila Molo. I think you can pick some of the issues, uh, yes, silent issues that have been raised. Uh, my friend Wilson Sosion and Senator Tabitha have tried on many things. Uh, so let's just go systematically. First of all is the question of overtaxation. Kenyans are probably the highest taxed people in the world right now. Probably. That's I'm yet lie. to know of any country That's where the taxes are higher. Total yeah? lie. Um, I have tried to look at the taxation levels um, and this regime particularly. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's, it's like they were sent just to tax Kenyans. <laughs> you know? And just when you thought that the taxation has reached, reached the highest level, then you still hear plans of introducing more taxes. Mm -hmm. If you analyze the taxation levels in this country, starting with the payers you earn, you know, to the VAT, to all the other taxations, including the ones in the social health insurance, and the last, the latest, in terms of the housing levy, then you will see the pain of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. And Senator Tabitha, it is not that these taxes were introduced two or three months ago. No. It is only the housing one that was the last, the, the last in a list, a long list. And you remember that even when the court stopped the housing uh, levy, this regime was still charging it and collecting it unlawfully. So the taxes, of course, have been there right from when we started complaining about the level of VAT, the, the fuel tax, and all those things. So it's always been there. The result of overtaxation is this. First, you, you then reduce the pool from which you are collecting because many more, many more people then uh, wind up their businesses, they wind up whatever they were doing. If you look around, so many businesses have closed. Mm -hmm. Secondly, especially for those big tax-paying companies, many of them, especially the ones that have the option to go and operate in other countries, they're just fleeing. They simply don't argue with you, but they just close shop and go to other countries. And in that respect, the, the pool again and the people from whom you can collect taxes reduces, and that's what happened. Thirdly, you know, tax evasion is an offense, but tax avoidance is not an offense. You then get people who actively design ways of avoiding paying tax. And all those as a, are as a result of overtaxation. You might think that when you overtax Kenyans, as they are doing right now, that therefore you end up collecting more taxes and therefore you have more money to do the things you are, but you, that you want to do. But it becomes counterproductive, as you can see. You end up in a situation where the tax that actually comes in is much less. And the bigger danger is when then you allow other regimes, other persons, to collect tax which is not centralized, like the Housing uh, uh, Act is doing, then you're also in danger of misusing the tax that is collected, and that's one of our problems. Let's talk about the Housing um, Act. You know, just as I said earlier, uh, William Ruto keeps uh, creating the things that are to be done and uh, the things to be solved by this act as you go along, and that's part of the problem. You do not, you should not have a situation where, you know, when somebody poses a challenge in church, then you come up with answers which are outside the act itself. Answers which only exist in your head, you know. 
and that's also uh, to an extent Senator Tabitha here is misleading. When you say that the Housing Act, you know, that there were amendments that has a situation where you can even build for people houses in their rural homes, there is nothing in that act for that kind of scheme. That whole act is designed in a scheme where they say you, you take public land, then you build on it, yes, um, and then you go under the Sectional Properties Act to give people individualized titles, even if it's on first floor, even if it's on second floor, or, or all that. There is no scheme in that act by, way, by uh, a way in which you can come to my rural village and come to my home or my neighbor's home who has a private title to their, to their land and then build a house under the affordable housing scheme in that land. And that's part of the problem. Part of the problem and the teachers and all the people in my village, many of whom took loans, put up small decent houses in their land, are living in their own homes as they're going to teach. But now they're being deducted 3% to build some house in a, in a town where they cannot live because there's no way anyone in, in, will ever leave their home. You know, at Isasa Watoke, you were ended to stay in Siaya uh, because now it's affordable housing. It does not help the question of improvement of houses in rural areas. It doesn't. There are some countries where, and I think Rwanda partly implemented this, where there was a, a clear scheme yeah, of rural housing they would come and there's a way of identifying the need, then they modestly improve for you that house and you know it is yours. Secondly, part of the amendments they introduced in the Senate, instead of helping the situation, worsened the situation. You now have a scheme where under uh, Section 31, you can buy that house, but you cannot sell it. And I demonstrated that last week, that now it yeah, is supposed to be your sell. home but you don't quite own it. So that even if you are lacking school fees and you want to sell it, you know, <laughs> they are telling you that another body must be the one to consent whether you, send, you sell it or not. Then how is it your home? Then it means it is not actually your home. It means it is still owned by that board. Mm -hmm. So even saying that you are giving people affordable houses then becomes a lie because someone else is controlling it. Now, separately from this, you know, Socion talks of uh, giving free education. And I agree with you, Wilson Sosion. But I heard your people say that there will be free uh, primary and secondary education. We are still waiting for the day that education will be free. So don't come here and say it should be. You should be telling us how far this regime has gone in making the free primary and secondary education a reality. And because it, it and was it shall be. It you know? shall be. It shall be in 10 years' time. We had no, not. No, no, no. <laughs> in this region. <laughs> so, so, so it was heavily involved in crafting, you know, the, yes. the education charter. That yes, bit. yes. But I'm part see, of it. But you see, uh, they, they specialized in, uh, in, in this talk of tuta. To Mepanga, to Tafanya. To to so that's why he's saying it shall be. It may be in another 10 years. Uh, uh, but by that time, as uh, uh, Manzo was saying, Perhaps we will have uh, the, the, chucked you from, uh, the, the from fund, those plans because the, funding the models plans are supposed are to be implemented the now, models are in not place. in future. Lastly, and that's why we need access. Okay, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Let him finish. <laughs> Lastly, um, we were talking about uh, two things which I had not commented on. Uh, the, the comment by the governor in terms of the need to redesign planning laws. You know, when you buy a house, part of what people look at are the planning laws in place. If you want to live in a place where you'll enjoy quiet possession, where your neighbors will not be on 10th floor looking down at your compound, then you end up paying much more money because it will be an exclusive area. But if it's an area that allows that kind of building, then you also understand and you go there knowing. This idea of saying you need to redesign is actually interfering with people's quiet possession. I think that we still have enough land around Nairobi that Metro if you Metropolis. want to peel, uh, you know, to build those kind of houses, just get fresh areas, redesign them, have building laws that allows that kind of thing. But stop allowing people, you know, who have owned places like the coal homes, then you give the neighbor an opportunity to put a 20-story building, you know, and some of them you find in two acres, there are 300 housing units. 
so that there's even a strain the no school yes on the amenities you the find suddenly no there's no water suddenly uh, schools are a challenge traffic becomes a challenge they see where system be, starts getting blocked you cannot allow that kind of thing that is improper secondly i think it is time that uh, the county of nairobi has conversation with the neighboring counties kiambu kajiado machakos because at the end of the day a significant part of the population of nairobi live in those places so they actually use amenities in Nairobi and they use amenities in the other counties. The other counties. They must have a working arrangement to understand that this is actually a metropolis and without trying to have exclusivity. And that's a conversation that we should have initially, actually. You know, the draft of the constitution that went to Naivasha uh, did not have Nairobi as a county for that very good reason. Nairobi was a metropolis. And the metropolitan area extended to some of these other counties. And it was to be managed different. And Nairobi was the only there. one without a county governor. It was to actually have a mayor, you know, with very many boroughs. Now, when it went to Naivasha in the wisdom at the time, the members of parliament decided to change that. And they made Nairobi a county. Which, by the way, is why Nairobi is county number 47. Because it was the last one to be created as an afterthought. Okay, because it was they just added it. But the result is that it may it treated Nairobi the way it's treating Siaya, the way it's treating you know uh, Garis and other places, and it should not be that. As we are looking at reengineering our framework in terms of the constitution, we need to reconsider the question of Nairobi. But even before doing that, the governor of Nairobi and the surrounding governors must have a clear working arrangement because that's the only way that Nairobi will uh, remain what it ought to be. John Mazo. There I agree with you. Yes. I want to say that uh, um, all of us, you know, want a better Kenya. And uh, even in those in opposition really want services to flow. And uh, when you look at uh, the Daily Nation uh, front page, you can see what has happened to families there, you know, flooded waters. And this is poor planning. It is failing to plan. And uh, the, the, the rights of these particular people have been interfered with, and somebody must take responsibility. And therefore, I believe the, the county government of Nairobi must be in the forefront. Lives have been lost. It's not, an, uh, you know, an easy thing for families who have lost their, their lives. You have a police officer who rescued people, but eventually lost his life there. And most probably, uh, his family is not going to be compensated sufficiently to take care of... Uh, this particular uh, situation and therefore it is important that we have proper planning proper laws and uh, when uh, the finance bill and the fin eventual finance act and even the housing laws uh, the most unfortunate thing has happened in the country first it was a dictatorship i've been in parliament for many years parliament did not uh, work the way it should work when the housing bill came to senate there was a proposal that we do public participation afresh other than what was done by the National Assembly. And uh, because we are devolved to counties and we vote by counties, and we were going to finally vote by, by counties, every county should have been given an opportunity to state its case. Unfortunately, this law was being rushed. The debate time was reduced from 20 minutes to four minutes, whereby now the, the bill was not properly considered, in my opinion. And uh, all these rushed laws, which has happened in this regime, they have amounted into a charade. They have tortured Kenyans. They have amounted into displeasure of Kenyans. And the parliament who are supposed to represent the Kenyans have not done their job properly out of the new dictatorship which has come up. And this is, the, this is making sure that parliament is just a rubber stamp. I believe parliament should stand its ground. The speakers should stand their ground. The members of parliament should stand their ground. They should represent their people. And that's why now you find in central Kenya there is a very big problem, particularly because of the growth of um, uh, certain, uh, you know, plants, uh, like, uh, uh, you know, the avocados, which are being taxed, you know, the nuts, which are being taxed, and it is making uh, the farmer end up with, with, with nothing. Because, you know, when you do farming, it's a business, actually. You have inputs and you have output. You can only be taxed on your profits, what you have earned. And therefore, uh, we should go back to the drawing board. Now that uh, the government has started apologizing 
from apologizing to the Kenyatta family to the new troubles in central Kenya and the members of parliament from central Kenya beginning to say we never read the bill, we never represented the people, we were forced into this. Really, I think the president should apologize to Kenyans for having hijacked parliament and for making sure that the parliament is a nullity and to a great extent also intimidating the judiciary so that we have only the executive ruling. I think we should go back on that if the president means well so that Kenyans can enjoy their space and can participate in the governance. Where, where Kenyans don't participate in governance, then we have a dictatorship. Uh, and that's where Kenyans are unhappy. And there is no way the president will be happy alone having collected all the taxes without a proper plan, uh, how they're going to be implemented, uh, who they're going to favor. If you look at the housing component, it should be distributed to the whole country equally then you, you know you have to have a method of identifying which Kenyans are most deserving. And then you have to, uh, to identify which land are you going to, to build these houses. If you are going to use public land, does it mean that the government has now sold uh, public land to certain individuals? So there are many unanswered questions and uh, uh, many uncleared issues. And I think now, now that it is time for forgiveness, and the time for people to ask to be forgiven for wrongs in the recent uh, Kenya Kwanzaa government, then it should go not only to the Kenyatas but to all Kenyans. Because it's Kenyans who have been wrong. And this apology means, where we, even, even that I like the Deputy President for one thing. He has even admitted there is something wrong with the finance law. And I think that admission is very important. Uh, and he has seen it from his, his backyard that Kenyans are unhappy. That Kenyans never really did public participation. And therefore, we should now endeavor to, corre to correct all these messes and make sure that uh, Kenyans are served, make sure that when floods come, uh, every, uh, there has been due diligence and uh, people running uh, or dealing with public affairs, Thank you. the leaders have pr done everything possible to make sure there's no flooding, to make sure that uh, uh, the systems are cleared to make sure that they are not clogged with the garbage. There is no proper garbage system in the city. There are many, many things. Uh, Honorable Sakaja, the county government must pull their socks on. And they must admit and rectify this so that people in Nairobi can live happier and can be happy with the leadership. All right. Uh, I wanted just to pick up on where you've left because you wanted to talk about also Gashagwa's, uh, you know, rowing back on these attacks that he has Think actually been meeting out here briefly on it then we move on to also the affairs of odm party uh, what is happening currently especially with uh, the, now they've postponed the, the elections the statements by kashagwa on kenyatas i think is being blown out of proportion to look like uh Ricardo kashagwa is mellowing on his earlier position uh, that's far from the truth, knowing who Kachagwa is. We were with him on this table in the talk shows them days during, uh, during, during the run-up to elections, and we've seen him speak. We saw him handcuffed in front of his own family, humiliated and taken to the cells, and many, many Kenyans were humiliated in that manner as presided over by President Uhuru Kenyatta. So, uh, the Kashagwa, the truthful man that we know, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, uh, with his relationship with, with, with the Kenyatas, I don't think, have the Kenyatas forgiven, uh, asked for forgiveness from Kashagwa as well? Take it away. For what they did to him? Because it's a two-way thing. And uh, I think Kashagwa's statements are, are more strategic, and uh, I don't think that was just a by-the-way statement. And now we pick it. What do you make mean it a by-the-way statement? Let's wait and see whether we'll repeat it. <laughs> yes. What That's do you mean a by-the-way statement? That's a fact. You, 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 a by-the-way you, statement. You, you, you're and, holding his brief. And, <laughs> yeah, of course, I know him. I can call him, and I know. I know. I have... Is our friend that so you want to say he's, he's actually just playing politics? This uh, is not coming from the bottom of his if heart. If he's managing Mount Kenya politics and uh, he has spoken in that manner, he knows what he's doing. That is being strategic and being smart. And uh, so if Kashagwa is juggling his own politics his own way and... Uh, 
it's, it's trying to pacify the Kenyatas from their bitterness because after all they are down. Kashago has beaten them down. Kashago is the deputy president. They are not, they are out of the presidents. Uh, Kenyatta family mistreated Kashago. Yeah? That's a fact. And uh, since they are down, he has made a statement uh, uh, that he has no business uh, uh, keeping any bitterness, which is normal for anybody. And I think Kenya Kwanzaa, we, we don't carry bitterness and we, we, we are not taking offenses with anybody. That is why President William Ruta is fully supporting and campaigning for his rival during election, uh, Raila Molo Dinga. That is a type of brand of politics. So, Until the one if, who was just if, uh, if, quoting if, the Bible if, and saying that if, the wise if, if changes was, his mind. If Gashagwa is sending a message to the Kenyatta family that he has nothing personal with them, so be it. It's okay. That is from himself. And uh, so when you read too much and say, oh, Kashagwa is mellowing, he's doing this, that is wrong. Kashagwa is Kashagwa. And you know him. And you always speak fire from the hips. He's the principal assistant of the president. He has been the main engine of, uh, of anchoring this government. And, uh, and even during inauguration of the president, he spoke very boldly about the economy. People almost... Uh, felt a bit uncomfortable with him, but eventually the facts he was talking about is what Kenyans understood and now we are getting out of the woods from, from where we were. Gashogwa remains the most truthful man within the framework of Kenya Kwanzaa and if he has extended some pacification and, 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 and massaging of the Kenyatas, he has done it. So Kenyatas have no reason to be bitter with Gashogwa. Kenyatas, they must accept Gashogwa is now the king of the mountain for now and 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 if they must also apologize for what they did to them so they should so it's two way thing all and right so who had qualms with it because it seems you're saying oh you know you should not saying that he's mellowing who had qualms with what you're saying because but why no, do you make no, it why do you put it on the front page and look to look like uh, it, it is a real big no, thing when it is not and you know you media. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 excuse me. You want to pick it and did you, did then... Did you look at, at what... No, no, we, we just ran by the story. Uh, picks a, and it was a, well a narrative that favors him. By the time it gets to uh, Manzo, <laughs> Manzo is even saying Kashoga is against the tax, taxation rules, of course. He's acknowledging the pressure of taxes, which all of us uh, acknowledge. It's a normal thing, but... Uh, uh, but, but, but nothing much has changed. Gashagwa remains Gashagwa, the second in command, the most truthful man in Kenya Kwanzaa. We saw him so he's handcuffed not, he's not by Uru for Kenyatta. For we saw him handcuffed and humiliated okay. by Uru Kenyatta. He has stated it. The way some of us were also humiliated by that regime. So we know about it. And, 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 and uh, Gashagwa is the leader of the mountain, has pacified every resident of the mountain. You, including, you seem to be speaking from including, the same point of pain in, and, and bitterness as well. Including with, with the previous course, regime. I'm very so, bitter so with the previous regime. Solid, yes. Uh, very bitter. So we can take your, bitter. Your, your sentiments also with a pinch of salt. It's, it's, not not yeah. with a pinch of salt. Those are facts. I'm, but Otenda Mule is my lawyer. He, he knows. <laughs> I was incarcerated by that regime and now I walked out. <laughs> Otenda Mule is a good friend. He comes to my place in my rural home for lunch and dinner. He knows we are good friends, and we know what you are talking about. You know, we you know, know who did what, <laughs> they, they always and say we know who engaged no, no, no. in excesses. They, they that a and let mind, me tell you, a warped mind will and let give me a tell you, view. let me tell you, knowing Kashago has been our colleague at that level, and now he was incarcerated, uh, right deep in his heart, he was humiliated like a non-human. He was reduced to a non-human okay, by, 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 by President Kenyatta's Thank administration. You. Thank you. And I, I see why you really wanted us to go back to this particular, because I thought we had actually passed this particular junction of discussing this topic. I can Those see are now. facts. Those are facts. <laughs> Naked facts. Okay, Tabitha, you wanted to weigh in on that as well. Of course, of course, Dibale. And, uh, and uh, I'm weighing in with a lot of questions in terms of um, when, but, how, what, you know, uh, uh, do, do the Kenyan people then, then want? If, when... Gashagwa, uh, the deputy president, talked about the issue of shares. I mean, it was the headline in terms of uh, it's, a, it's a one sort of one-sided in terms of Kenya Kwanzaa alone. But here comes a leader who is a representative of the people in terms of being the deputy president for the Republic of Kenya and not for the Mount Kenya region. And in that aspect, in his wisdom, he decides 
to be a leader, be a Christian for that matter, and say that, you know what, we are all one. My brothers, at some point, of course, we wrangled politically. The key point is not on personal, but politically, we had issues. And as much as we said a few words here and there, I mean, let's move on. Let's soldier on for the betterment of our people and for this country. Putting in mind, yes, he was humiliated. He was, he was put in jail uh, by the previous regime. But he has come out as a leader. So then I ask, when I ask how, what, when do, I mean, do Kenyans then want, if you don't want leaders who come out and say that let us bring togetherness, let us bring oneness. Look at the issue of NADCO. Uh, when we, we, we came aboard, we had, has... let me finish, we, we, we came and, and had an ad call which was uh, with the two sides of the government. And today we tabled the report, which is positive and stopped Amanda Manu for the betterment of the bringing Kenyans together. Number two, which is very key, when the issue of AU for Baba has been welcomed by none other than the president of Himself. this country, there is no problem, there is no issue, you know, it is embraced. What is wrong then with Rigiji embracing his people and telling them, let us all come together? Baba has, you know, is being supported question fully. Is, question is, who by has the raised hesitation and, of course, refutation about his seeking for forgi forgi forgiveness? He's found it in his wisdom, as I say, so that saying, which the Shagwa has decided. Everyone is in agreement. Uh, no, it is not bad to ensure that you bring all your brothers aboard. Tomorrow, if Kalonzo also uh, is, is brought aboard and told our brother from the eastern region, let us soldier on. What can we do as far as this region is concerned? How come there's no dis so much negativity when it comes to Baba being supported? by the president for the AU position, which we, 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 we support him to be there because he qualifies, he has a lot of experience and many other okay, factors. I, I why don't, is it I don't an follow issue, where you Dibal, and Sosion are coming why, why with this particular issue? issue because why is I it can an so, issue, I Dibal, see no issue. No, why is it an issue when Rigidi says, the issue? When Dibal, Rigidi says let me, let me, come aboard, I mean, my brother, me. if we know we had some issues here and there, I mean, let's put that aside and let us be together. We are let brothers, on we are this. one community, we are Kenyans. What is the problem? You had There's commented. no problem with that. No, no. I'm, I'm responding to the two of you yeah. on this. And uh, uh, I'd, 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 I'd given my explanation. But what I'm wondering is, I've keenly listened to Wilson Sosion and Senator Tabitha for all of about eight minutes. And I'm wondering what the complaint is about. Everyone is welcoming the fact that Rigiji has apologized. So when you then seek to explain, I don't know what you're explaining. It's and especially Sosion seems pained he's even see he's even putting explaining for uh gachagua what gachagua did not say and yet what he said is so clear it was uh you know played here it's in all the papers it is very clear he's apologizing no one has said they have a problem with the apology but man, all we have said so. is this no first we said the things for which he's apologizing now he should not even have said or done them then that's number one but we welcome the fact that he has realized the, 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 how wrong he was, okay? Mm -hmm. But secondly, and that's we where have you're picking gone a wrong on to venture mm -hmm. as to why he is apologizing now. And we have said, one, it is because of the disquiet in the mountain in terms of taxation. So, two, it is because <laughs> of the issues in terms of his position that is starting to emerge. There are people who are thinking that Ndindi Nyoro should be the one to carry the mantle moving forward. And it seems to be getting some traction. So to that extent, he needs all the friends he can have in Mount Kenya. And if that includes the former president, so be it. So no one has an issue with it. I'm wondering where you are pains to explain away no. <laughs> what um. no one has an issue with. Lastly, how do you fault the media for highlighting what the deputy president has said? And it's a big well, thing faulted. because he was Nobody very loud is. when he was criticizing the Kenyatta's. This regime was very loud and we said it's not just uh, Gachagwa who should apologize. Even William Bruto should because of the things they said and did to the former president and the former first family. You know, we are not just talking of Uhuru. Uh, Kenyatta, Uhuru Kenyatta Senior was just a former president and Mamangina is rightfully a first lady. You know, so the things they did and the things they say require an apology. All we are saying is We've had Rigiji 
Now, now let's hear William Root also apologize. Should the Kenyatta Shouldn't the Kenyatta also apologize? No, we you know, things shouldn't the Kenyatta apologize you know for the atrocities? Yeah, yeah. It's let's go political Kenyatta atrocities. Did not, Uhuru did not mistreat Gashagwa. If you have in excess of 200 million in your account unexplained, and ESCC come calling, what's wrong with that? In fact, what should be explained is how come that case was withdrawn and we never had that now no the, the grounds on which it's withdrawn. It is not the prosecution to decide whether there's evidence. The case is supposed to go to its logical conclusion. Then the court decides whether there's evidence or not. Not somebody withdrawing without explanation. That is what we should be questioning. We should commend those who commenced the case in the first place and ask those who withdrew it without explanation why. But the pain that the two of you seem to feel no, we when we are no meeting we no <laughs> pain. is something happy. I don't understand. No, 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 no. no, no, no. You have engaged in political happy. expediency <laughs> of the statement. <laughs> You've engaged in and, unnecessary political and, expediency and, from and, the statement. And lastly, so like so the way you are arguing lastly, that so uh, so the statement... I, I, I see why Socion is bitter. He's saying no. he's bringing his own bitterness into play here. And he's saying that the former regime mistreated but Sosion, Wilson Sosion, yes, you are my client, and I agree. <laughs> but you are vying for office. You are the Secretary General of NAT. It's not the former regime that removed you from night. When you are vying in Bomet, and you are not vying on ODM, you are not vying on Jubilee, you are vying on UDA. It is them who denied you the ticket. Uh, no, so stop who is this? <laughs> you should blame your own people. <laughs> stop twisting and... You touch her own now. No, 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 no. Utenda no. <laughs> wants, really wants to be... Utenda <laughs> wants to be... Utenda wants to be... You should not start with a wife. Meticulously, uh, politically uh, clever. You are part of <laughs> <laughs> now, you, you, you know what Atienda Mulu is trying to do is to politicize some of these statements. And that is what you are saying, exercise, restraint. Kashagwa uh, knows what he spoke about. And uh, if it is about uh, building relations and healing from the past, and he has stated it as such, as a leader, so be it. You know, sometimes... Uh, and, 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 and even Jomo Kenyatta told the Wazungus in uh, a settlers meeting in Akuru, we forgive and forget. Yeah, forgive and forget. Even delay, even whatever you did to us, it's okay. We have a duty to build Kenya. Here is a deputy president who is the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. And if he feels that one or two individuals are bitter for one reason or the other against him, uh, it, you lose nothing by saying, I for, uh, forgive me for any wrong, and I uh, also forgive you. No, that is it's a normal thing. It's a Christian statement. Uh -huh. Do people die for even asking for forgiveness where they've committed no sin? No, we don't. We tell God, forgive us our transgressions. You, you don't mention exactly what it is. Uh -huh. So really, forgiving is, is, is a Christian virtue for any Christian, and you don't die by saying it. Kashagwa is not dead. He remains the deputy president. Thank you. He will go on and... Uh, I think we've been in the grand round if, now. If, if, he, if he has extended <laughs> some Christian feelings mm. to the family of Kenyatta, yeah. so be it. What is wrong with that? What is wrong with that? For and, us... And, and he's yeah, coming from a political yeah. process. This is the point of is what what is coming from a political process. What is the issue? So what Otienda Molo is trying to... To, to package, to look very political, that the mountain is bitter, no. somebody is trying to replace no. the problem. Let me tell you, Kashago will be the running mate in 2027. Exactly. Don't doubt. So yes. don't begin building castles and trying to imagine some shadows. <laughs> Kenya what, what, Kwanza is not an administration so from, that from is founded on lies and maybe, deceit. Maybe I should latch in and so, ask you, from your estimation, you think all in, is intact in Mount Kenya of region? Of course. <laughs> Wait for 2027. Exactly. <laughs> you will go and hide in your toilet. No, I'm just asking you currently, if you may just give yes. a gauge and a barometer. Yes. Yeah. All, all is well. well. Yes. All is well, except that uh, Kenyans are, are free democratically to question one thing or the other, just like you saw the farmers yesterday questioning the type of fertilizers they were receiving in Nandi. And, and that's a normal right. thing. And, 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 and thing. Didn't, we, didn't we have yeah. just Li recently living in the uh, normal of Mary, uh, raising also questions regarding being shortchanged within UDA? <laughs> Honorable Omatinga. <laughs> My friend. Uh, and it's was on record. Kenya, Kenya, and isn't the governor of Nyeri? Yes, the governor of Nyeri as well. Any, no, 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 no. no. Those, are, those are just 
But yes. they say it. Those are so their own personal. Those are their own yes. personal. Yes. And they're entitled. They're entitled to the Just entitled. Just like Wamuchomba. This Chomba is speaking her own things and she cannot be tied. So exactly. you see, and let me those are this, democrats. The issue, let me tell you, Kenya Kwanza is very democratic, very extreme and tolerant. This one that he has talked about, uh, members of parliament do not read uh, uh, these bills. That is her own opinion. It's her own that opinion as case. a person. Does it mean that the uh, senior counsel Tendo Molo does not read these uh, books? He's a member of parliament. Does Tendo Molo case. read literally so everything? So there are issues where you find that they are, they are Do you really issues. read literally that is her everything? Opinion. She's entitled mm -hmm. to. She's the one who doesn't read. Hold. We leave it at that. But did we have Owen Bay just the other day who was trying to also just go to the parking lot, the you know the cafeteria to get at least a quorum? Yeah, for the private members are uh, really in, in the house as no, well. No, no, yeah. no. Mobilizing for the quorum is part of parliamentary practice. But that is the information that the practice. opposition come on this table, start giving you. I was there, I was here with the Owen, and we, we told them actually, they normally, the opposition normally Senator, walks out. Senator, let me say Most this. of them. Senator Tabitha. But my point was, Senior Council, second. Yes. My, just my point was that uh, some of these issues that are being brought are personal issues. A case example is Honorable Wamaua from Maragua saying that members do not read. That is not the case. Uh, I know Senator. Senator Manzo is a, a very uh, good uh, uh, researcher and he reads to the bottom of things. I know senior counsel is on the front line ensuring that but and he was on the front line as far as the amendments were concerned. So that is but not the yeah, full case. She's, she's speaking well, to a lot of legislators who to, also on her know, own. She's she's representing the herself. They, they never read the, the entire she re She's representing herself. Okay. Senator Tabitha and Wilson Sosion do not deny the obvious. It is obvious that there's disquiet in the mountain, okay? How do we know that? First, the governor Funyeri and the senator Funyeri are on record speaking about that, okay? Two, we know for a fact that there have been many meetings where Ndindi Nyoro and some of my colleagues have gone, and they are on record as demanding that in their opinion, it is Ndindi Nyoro who should be the running mate later. Three, my colleagues of, from Muranga have are on record in a meeting just two weeks ago when discussions were being had on taxation. And the ground became so hostile that some of them had to take off. It's on record. For Gashagwa himself, in today's papers, not any other, in today's paper, when he's talking about apologizing to the Kenyatta's, admits that there's a taxation problem, especially regarding the farmers. Five, Ndindi Nyora just spoken here. Instead of now attacking the act that enables that taxation, he is attacking the agency that is charged with collecting those taxes and is instructing Kerry and other, uh, and other agencies to go slow on taxing farmers because it's hurting farmers in Mount Kenya. When you come here and say there's no problem, you are denying the obvious and it makes you look really bad. No, it's not All you are saying it. is this. Mm -hmm. All you are saying is that it is okay and nobody has faulted uh, Gachagua for apologizing. We are demanding more apologies, including from the president. But we are saying that he should not have done or said the things he did in the first place. And we are saying that there are reasons why he is going that way. But we welcome the apology. No one has any, any problem with that apology. Lastly, and because you mentioned it, on fertilizer, the big problem, and that's where we should go, is to address impunity. The amount of impunity we are seeing in this regime is like has never been seen before. When you now tell uh, farmers that you are helping them by giving them subsidized or subsidized fertilizer, and then you end up distributing sand and flospa uh, dust, you know, well packaged in NCPK uh, bags, and it, it goes all the way, and you even saw there's that whole clip that is showing them, you know, packing them, uh, and they've, of course, hidden the, the, you know, the faces. It means the regime of the day is aware. There is no way you can start packing sand and distributing it in official sacks and distribute it all the way unless some people were new and are intentionally part of it. But you see what happens? That's the definition of impunity. You do the wrong thing knowing very well that there will be no consequences. By now, People should have been made to resign. People should have been arrested. But you will not hear anyone resigning and you will not hear anyone being arrested because it is well within the knowledge of the government that this was being done. The cartels are cartels well known to the government. Otherwise, by now, people should have been long arrested and they should be in court. It boils down to one word, impunity. And it's impunity that is defining the road carnage 
the seven students from Kenyatta whose faces are now young people. Eleven. E Eleven, actually. It's very unfortunate in terms of the road carnage. The impunity continues and then suddenly as a knee-jerk reaction, then they bring in NTSA which should not have been withdrawn in the first place. It is impunity when you see the headlines in terms of Kiare, the job dispute that may cripple Kiare. The job dispute is because of impunity. Mm -hmm. you, last week we were di discussing the mode of recruitment of uh, the agents who are recruited by Kiare, where you find that uh, you know, um, up to 60 to 70% are only from two tribes. But even within those two tribes, there's over-concentration on places where the chair of the care board comes from, where you know, uh, certain members of parliament come from. So that impunity that is even practiced by care is what brings the court to stop it. There is the story of 17 billion, again in today's paper. The lady was claiming <laughs> 17 billion, who, if you look at it, look at her, cannot persuade you that she has even 100 million. But the 17 billion was because of impunity in terms of the so-called G2G oil deal which allowed some space, and now this lady, you know, with other shadowy figures within the same government, were coming to utilize to get 17 million that should be uh, Kenyan's money. So all these things, whether it's the Carnage, KRA, 17 billion, you know, the Finance Act, the Fertilizer, they're all defined with one common denominator, the impunity. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. I think we should all give our closing <laughs> remarks as well, uh, after you respond to it briefly. We we'll begin with you, Soso, or, or Tabitha. He agrees, so he has nothing to add. <laughs> no, 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 I've heard, uh, I've heard senior counsel uh, talk about, uh, you know, that uh, the cartels are known by this yes. government, and uh, then that means, if this is coming from the senior counsel, he's clearly saying that these cartels are known by this government, then it means even him, he knows these cartels. And you know why he's quiet? He's quiet, awaiting that then he will be offering them services at the to courts protect. when he'll be there trying to defend them. And so, as a leader, as a leader, as a representative of the people, if you know these cartels, why are you also not on the front line, on the good leadership, and be able to, 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 to put these cartels out to light? And as I said earlier, on the issue of fertilizer, we have a few cartels who are trying to sabotage the government agenda of the subsidized fertilizer so that it brings the negativity of it. Because we've seen how productivity, agriculture-wise, has increased. Productivity has increased massively, very well. And farmers have been happy. So we have a few unscrupulous. So the issue of saying that the government uh, knows them, then it means it's the one who knows them. Uh, touching on the issue of running meat, I can tell you, Dibal, we have so many people uh, claiming that, oh, they were to be running mates of the president. Long story short, Rigadi Kashagwa is the deputy president of this country. He has shown his leadership moving forward on how to bring Kenya together. The issues of shares are no longer there. We are one Kenya. And, la and, and uh, just lastly, on the touch on the issue of KRA, by the way, uh, I think last week we came across as women leaders, we came across uh, whereby women have been denied opportunities because they are pregnant and because of their high HIV status. Yes. We are bringing this through parliament because it is wrong, it's impunity, pregnancy is a natural blessing, and KRA being a government body cannot be on the front line trying to deny women opportunities in this country because they are carrying a blessing. Those people doing that, they are rogue, they are inhumane, they are, they are a blessing of the same women. So in that, in that regard, as far as uh, the issue of KRA is concerned, we are embarking on that as women leaders and we seek support from our male counterparts in the both houses, National Assembly and the Senate. Okay. All said, uh, uh, we embrace, we look forward for a beautiful, beautiful country with the best housing models in this uh, city and across. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Debar, right. so, are you closing your Anybody well? yes. dreaming, imagining, and conversing political confusion in Kenya Kwanzaa administration is living in a fool's paradise. We are a structured and democratic entity. The president is William Ruto. The deputy president is Rikati Kashagwa. The rest are stories for another day and for taking some and the little AU wine chairman? with the, with the, with the, the AU chairman will be Raila Raila Molo Molo and that story is closed and we are Kenya and we move on. The next we'll talk about other things. So Kenya is getting 
more organized, more orderly, more democratic, and I'm happy as an active Kenyan who has played his role in labor movement and parliament and in the political space to see Thank you. this happening. Number two, cartels. And the, and the final one. Cartels, cartels, and I agree, impunity should not find its space in Kenya Kwanzaa administration. And if anybody is breeding impunity, thank engaging you. in impunity, then I don't think it is in the Kenya Kwanzaa thank administration. You, thank and you, and thank the you. president should live up to his words of thank you. three words. Mutu kutoka Kenya, kuingia jela, ama kuenda binguni. Those who want to engage in any form thank of you. impunity and practice, I, we don't believe in that. Thank you. As Kenya Kwanzaa. Thank you, straight. Uh, Senior yes. Council, your closing remarks. First, I agree with Senator Tabitha in terms of KRA. And it is true that in the recruitment, pregnant women were stopped and excluded. Those who were, who were said to have tested HIV positive were also stopped. That discrimination is clearly unlawful. And it's not just the women, Tabitha. Mm -hmm. Even the men were also equally stopped. So that is something that must be addressed fundamentally. But the fundamental issue in it is how they were recruited. Lastly, Kenya Kwanza needs introspection. Look at the back side of the Daily Nation. Kenya's happiness ranking drops for the first time in five years. With the days, as the days go by, Kenyans are becoming more and more unhappy. And it's not just Mount Kenya, it's the whole of Kenya. You need a lot of introspection. And the more you keep taxing Kenyans, wapende wasipende, the more their ranking will be dropping and they'll be unhappier. Thank you. Thank you. And on that particular note of happiness as well, maybe it's high time now we also enroll in Kiratu Murungi's Institute of Happiness. Right? <laughs> the uh, University of Happiness. Uh, University of Happiness I as think well. I'll be glad and to undertake a PhD in the University <laughs> okay. of Happiness. <laughs> You need, you need to pick you from the president, deputy president as well, in terms of reconciliation and forgiveness. Yeah, we are heading towards Easter. You should open up your heart as well and uh, bear out all this bitterness that you've had with the previous regime and ask for forgiveness as well. That will be you forgive, forgive them. The <laughs> forgive them. Thank yes, you very much. Forgive them. All right. You've been watching CS Affairs here on Morning Prime. Thank you very much for your valued company. I thank also my panelists. Always a treat having you every Tuesday and engaging on this.